Welcome to Builds With Blocks, a show centred around the micro action figures and brick based construction sets of the Halo universe. I'm your host Tom Fishenden and I'm joined by Colin Perkins. This is weird. <laughs> it is weird, I don't <laughs> like it. Uh, Matt Salvatore. Ahoy ahoy, how's it going guys? And friend of the show Gabe from G Customs Creations. What's going on everybody? Ooh. Okay, so today's so, show we will be looking at the brand new Mega Constructs Halo Infinite sets. Obviously, we recently saw the Halo Infinite gameplay reveal, and I think we are all very, very hyped to be getting our hands on these sets, so we can't wait to share our thoughts with you. So before we get into the main topic of the show, let's chat about what we've been up to on the block front. Colin, what have you been up to? Oh boy, um, I've been gobbling up as, as many sets as I can find. And uh, we've talked about it a little bit. I, I did get the Halo Heroes Series 12 a little while, while ago, so have that secured. I've been able to get, um, well, most of the sets we're going to talk about today, so I won't reiterate that. But all of the sets that we're talking about today, um, I, I have them all. I also was lucky enough to find the Energy Sword... And then nice. I also grabbed the skiff. So we're not going to cover those because um, I haven't had a chance to put those together today. But everything else um, I have had, I have in my possession. So it'll be good to chat through that stuff. And then, oh, I also got the um, Masters of the Universe, the Battle Cat set. Oh, it's sweet. like the, what is it, Merman, the Rotan set. And that's pretty rad. So they did a really good job on Battle Cat. The, they didn't color, they didn't um, do any paint applications to his armor yeah but that's fine i feel like you know for my purposes it, it'll, it'll look fine on my my shelf it would be nice if they did but you know i understand and then i it also gives me the opportunity to paint my, paint it myself if i if i ever you know feel feel uh like i want to go down that path so yeah i um, yeah. doing lots of collecting and, and and building the new stuff cool and um in terms of projects you're working on what have you been up to with mission debrief recently uh, debrief, we're in the middle of Halo Wars 2, so come check cool. that out. We just finished the From the Deep episode, so that'll probably be out before okay, we... Okay, cool. Uh, we're, we're, over, we're over halfway through now, and we're back in the cutscene <laughs> cut area. <laughs> the game starts with some really sweet cutscenes, and then it goes dark for a good five yeah. or six missions. So, so the next episode that we record finally gets some of that sweet blur action. Nice, nice, that's wicked, cool. Well, Matt, what about you? What have you been up to? Mm, what haven't I been up to? It has been crazy. I have picked up a ton of the, actually not a ton, I've picked up several of the Halo Infinite sets, so we'll discuss those shortly. Um, I've definitely watched the gameplay demo uh, over and over, so I'm definitely enjoying what I'm seeing, and... Yeah, not too much other than that. I've done some reviews on the figures and sets, yep. so mm -hmm. um, I'm happy to get more of these to do more reviews and happy to start talking about them. But other than that, not a huge amount of stuff. Cool, cool. Have you got any plans for any stop motions in the pipeline at the moment? Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, yep. It's been quite a busy time because I'm back at work and stuff okay. like that, so um, I'm going to try to do something with the Halo Infinite uh, figures so hopefully i'm Sweet. able to kind of pull something together on that but other than that not too much okay cool no that makes sense and then gabe what about you what have you been up to since we last spoke man uh since the episode that i came on i've bought quite a few sets like everybody <laughs> else um so we'll get into those later but i have been working tirelessly on a bunch of new custom projects um nice. after the xbox presentation with halo infinite uh the following day i think that was a friday i dropped my new halo infinite chief figure um, so I was pretty happy about that, but I've got some other, I've got some Covenant, like you say, Tom, from Halo 3. I've got, um, a Mark 7 custom coming along nicely, but, you know, I've just been staying on the custom grind and, you know, going to my local shop, seeing what they have in stock, but just the same as usual. Cool. Nice. Cool. Yeah, no, I was going to say your usual seems to be pretty damn good. So yeah, <laughs> your usual's in the mix, <laughs> They're in the mix. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> cool cool so obviously um we are a mega construct show but i feel like we would be remiss to not at least touch on the gameplay yeah. so matt i'm gonna start with you this time what did you think of the gameplay reveal for infinite 
I loved it. Um, <laughs> lots of lots of cool stuff coming out of it. Um, it's nice to see that they kept uh, some of the gameplay mechanics of Halo Five. So I'm happy to see yep. Clamber back. Um, the sprint. grapple hook, <laughs> yes, Sprint. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't want to. Mm-hmm. That's a hot button topic. Uh, no, even today, guys, it doesn't have to um, be. <laughs> um, I do think that the grappling hook is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually kind of curious to see how it'll work and and stuff like that because I wonder if you could just grapple anything and if it pulls you to yeah. it. So I'm I'm curious on how that mechanic is going to work. Um, In theory, would you rather have the grapple hook or so not be not having played the game at all, just seeing how the grapple hook works? Would you rather have that or a jetpack? I'd rather have a jetpack mm. uh, personally because I think it it fits more in the universe of Halo. You know, if if you're in space, a grappling hook ain't gonna help you with beans. Uh, so <laughs> I mean, I think a jetpack or, or some kind of thrust propulsion, like the thruster packs, would be more apt, especially because you're like a two thousand pound Spartan and you're being pulled by a tiny little cable, and the physics are kind of off with. Like if you grapple a brute, you pull yourself to them, or and the brute isn't even moved by it. So I feel like if you're if you're applying a, a force or a pull to a brute, the brute would also move to you. So yeah, it's yeah. a little it's a little awkward. Um, I'm curious to see how it all how it shakes out. But other than that, I have to say I love what we saw. I love what the weapons are. The design looks nice. It's nice to see all the all the figures and stuff from the mega construct line in the gameplay. Mm-hmm. So. Um, lots of cool little things. Um, I have to say that the, I know a lot of people are talking about, I don't, how to, what's his name? What's the brute's name? Craig. Estherum. Estherum. Yeah. No, Craig. Yeah, uh, Tom, you were saying how much you liked it. I thought it was kind of, it kind of fell a little flat for me. Um, but I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm excited and I'm, I'm able to, you know, grow with this. So I think, uh, I want to see this character go on. Cause right now I'm looking at it and I'm like, it's the not atriox so um <laughs> yeah i'm kind of curious to see where they go with that but other than that i am all hyped for it i love what they're doing the pilot looks cool uh everything looks awesome and i love the open ish world aspect that you that they have included i love that like that pan of all seeing all you can go with halo cool cool gabe what about you what are you thinking i i'm extremely excited some of my favorite aspects are probably um the likelihood that there will be a codex i would love to have some like being able to to look at something and see all of the enemy like the factions and all the enemy types or the weapons and their specifics and being able to read through it is something that for me like organizationally it would be super cool um it's like heaven for reference material Mm -hmm. as well isn't Mm -hmm. it yeah yeah Uh, I I agree with with Matt. I'm really happy that um, some of the you know some of the weapons that we've gotten from Mega finally have official names like yeah. the Bulldog or the yeah, Mangler. Sure. Um, and even in that trailer, they showed so many new ones like the Ravager or the Pulse Carbine or the Commando. Um, so it, you know, in one aspect, I'm super excited for the possibilities that are now open to Mega now that this has been shown off by 343. But um, I'm not too like everybody keeps talking about how flat things looked or how off yeah. the graphics were. Um, I try to keep in mind that this is a demo. It is not finished. I know that it is close to release, closer than it has ever been yeah. before, but it's not finished and it's not the final product. And I, uh, um, I have you know I have all my faith in the team that you know I trust them with this series and. From what they've already shown us, it looks like you know they're listening to the community and they they're going on the right track back to what majority of people want. Um, so I'm confident in what they'll bring out, and you know I'm trying to keep my hopes up, and I'm excited for what we've got to look forward yeah, to. Definitely, I almost feel bad leaving you till the end, considering you're usually the host. But Colin, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> well, I was just going to build off the demo thing a little bit. Um, you know, we're no experts, but I've um, I I from my understanding from listening to podcasts and listening to people that are in the industry, that demo was going to be the demo that was going to be at E3. And they probably started Mm -hmm. working on that thing. I don't know, December, November, the previous year. No. So three, four, three hasn't said anything specifically about that. Maybe they'll address it by the time we publish this episode. But my, my thought is they probably 
planned for a good six to eight months of work on that demo. So that that thing had to have been in process before, well before you know COVID and all the other stuff hit. Um, so it's just it's it's got to be disheartening for the team um, at three four three when people you know when this is the only way you get to present it right. Um, this demo you have yeah. to present this gameplay demo because there's no E three um, and you're not you can't give a behind the closed look at at this. They get so much flack for because you're going to put it up on YouTube and anybody can pause YouTube at any point in the game. You know, when they, <laughs> yeah. they pause it yeah. at a certain spot where you, your team probably just didn't, you know, they didn't res it up as much as they needed to because it was going to be a, a, a gameplay demo at E3. You know, again, it makes it sound like I'm defending it, but I, at the same time, I feel like it, somebody needs to defend this team because they're putting in so much work, yeah. right? Um, no, yeah, for sure. I think you're, I think you're spot on with that. So, like, like Craig, the Craig meme, like they didn't, like Craig, oh, yeah, Craig gosh. appears for like, a, like a millisecond, right? But whoever, whoever made that <laughs> that meme was dead set on making Halo look, look a certain way, right? So it's just frustrating. Yeah. Nobody goes in through a game like I've never played a game pausing it and trying to, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like it flows as a game. Well, all the comparisons yeah. were like Craig to um, The Last of Us or, or Ghosts of, of on, was it Anamusha or whatever it is. Um, whereas Tsushima, like Tsushima. Oh, Tsushima. Yeah. Yeah, Ghost of Tsushima, Tsushima. But that's like comparing Craig to like the main star. You know, they weren't comparing Chief to the main star or whatever. So it's just, it's just. It's the gross internet thing where you can make anything look bad if you really want to. So yeah, I feel yeah. I feel like people also need to keep in mind that even w so even back in older Halo games, if you're too far out of range with something, textures pop in and out. I remember that happening even in Halo Five, and also yeah. with this being an open world game and having to load, it'll probably be procedurally generated. But with having to load so much at one time like that, you can't possibly expect everything to be in perfect resolution and all textures loaded in and all models you know crisp and clean like it, it's going to have to load well the demo was built again the demo was built to be played for you know five minutes by a professional that was on the floor they weren't sitting there taking exactly. snapshots of it while they're doing their screenshots in real time so they didn't have that they just didn't have that in mind if they knew all this stuff was going to happen they probably would have, you know, sunk even more time in it, which who knows what it, what that would have done for the yeah. larger timeline. So anyway, yeah. um, I overall, so my my thoughts, I'm I'm happy. I I love the the having the grapple shot. I think makes sense to me to be able to traverse around the ring in this open ish area. Um, it, like if if like the my question about the jetpack is, I feel like if you had a jetpack, you'd probably make it like the, the Halo Four jetpack, which only could, you know, only had so much propulsion before it ran out and you fell. Yeah. Um, but you know, if you have the grapple hook, it's like you can make certain zones on the edges of the open world. Just not, you can't, you just can't access it, right? So I feel like that's cool. Yeah. I want a grapple shot up to the um, the crashed frigate. Oh like, yeah, immediately. Like that's yes. gonna be cool. Um, so exploring this world with that addition, additional traversal instead of just like trying to hop up on rocks like we've been doing before, or you know, grenade jump <laughs> to the spots oh, we're yeah, not yeah. supposed to. <laughs> it allows us to get around to areas that we we always wanted to in the maps. Yeah. Um, but now it's going to be something that they they they've intended for yeah. us to do. It has a cool Batman feel. Yeah. Right. Um. And yeah, the physics and the weight. You know, maybe this. This set of Yomrolner is supposed to be a little lighter or something like that. Who knows? Anyway, um, overall, I'm, I'm happy with, with the gameplay that I've seen. I like the different armors that we've seen from the um, from yeah. the aliens, from all the, all the uh, alien races, which I think is, is fun. And it kind of plays into what we've been speculating, like these mercenaries. And, you know, there's just a bunch of these factions on the ring. and But then there's also the organized banished. So that will be fun to see how that plays out. I think the the main antagonist is interesting. I'm curious about where Atriox is. I'm curious about Cortana. There's lots of questions to he's unravel. Dead, so Colin. it'll be fun. No, uh, he's not don't dead. kill Atriox off screen. No. <laughs> no, I agree. Um, People do not like that. <laughs> no, I think for me, the thing that I'm most excited for is the world building. So I was watching um, Halo Cannon's video. And he noticed that in the TAC map, when it goes across, a few different markers come up. 
So there was like a marker for a marine rescue mission. And then there were two different markers for different like UNSC outposts. And I think that's the kind of stuff that excites me. I like to kind of get immersed in this world and have loads of different things to do. And also to see how normal people within the Halo universe are responding Mm -hmm. to these things. Um, So in that kind of regard, I'm very excited about the fact that we have the pilot because I think he's going to be a really, really good vessel to explore the emotional Mm -hmm. side of this story. Um, which I think is going to be awesome. I honestly, I could talk about it for ages. I'm actually arguably the most excited I've been for Halo in years. Um, So I'm very, very excited to talk more about it in the future. Um, But obviously, today's episode is all about the Halo Infinite sets and not the game, (laughs) sadly. So I reckon we get straight into these. Um, Now, just before we jump in, If you are listening along at home and you'd like to look up any of these sets, they are now all on the official Mega Constructs website. So you can visit www.megaconstructs.com slash halo or slash n dash us then slash halo. um, And you will be able to see all of the sets that we're talking about in today's episode. So we have broken it down into all of the different sets that we all have. Uh, We have all got different sets. And the reason I'm hosting today is because sadly I have only got one. Um, (laughs) But it's a a good one. It is a good one. It is. It is a good one. And and we'll talk about how I got it when we get to it. Because somebody on the show may have had something to do with that. Um, But yeah. So without any further ado... Gabe, did you want to take it away with the two-pack? Absolutely. Uh, I was at my... uh, I went to my local Target, actually, with the... What are they? The DCPI numbers, which each set comes with. And that's actually how uh, they had it in the back, because there was nothing on shelves. But I got a couple of them, um, along with with some other sets. But the two-pack... I wanted to make sure to get that one just in case they didn't have anything else because it has Chief. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, for anybody that doesn't know, the two-pack comes with a banished Brute Warrior figure and the new Halo Infinite Chief minifigure. And it comes with um, a spike grenade, gravity hammer, energy sword, the new, what is it, the M60 sidekick pistol, I suppose. Yep. Yeah. The new MA40 assault rifle. And uh, it comes with two frag grenades, I believe. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the two figure stands. But uh, Chief, we get the un- do we get the unnamed uh, weapon with that? Too? Do we do? We do. Yeah. The not yeah. brute shot. The the rifle, <laughs> as it's right. called. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the thing. But the yeah. Chief in this set has a like a silver dry brush, similar to the Halo Two figure that came with the Arbiter versus Chief pack. Um, so. Com- you know, compared to the other ones, I think we've got like dirty boot version, clean version, and then this one has a, a dry brush. Mm-hmm. But the brute uses yeah. an amalgamation of all kinds of pieces. It has the same shoulder armor as the Halo Five Arbiter, but oh, um, cool. in red. Okay. And it actually—I'm not sure if anybody else has talked about it specifically, but in the two pack, the brute has these very, very, very small uh, printed on kind of like bullseye applications and there's three that run down the side of each shoulder um which is just a they've gone so above and beyond with the details on their figures this year which makes me super happy um but it uses the halo 3 brute helmet the arbiter shoulders it's got uh atriox's chest with a new um like a loincloth sort of similar to the the chieftain Mm -hmm. figure um which is rubber right yeah well that's cool yeah, yeah, that's it's completely made out of rubber. But um, the energy sword also has gone back to the old style, which revealed in the gameplay trailer, or I guess it was the gameplay trailer, not the gameplay footage. Like a minute long. They yeah. show a brief <laughs> moment, a brief moment of the energy mm-hmm. sword, which sort of resembles Halo Three, which makes me uh, pretty happy. As much as I like the new mold, uh, I'm kind of glad that the old mold's making a return. Um, I think, other than that, the pistol has some painted applica- some painted detail application. It's got like gunmetal metallic gray on top of the the base gray plastic. But, um, cool. you know, as a two pack, I give it. You know, if I had to rate it from like one to ten, I'd probably give it like a, a seven or eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish cool. the, I wish the brute was more similar to the hero series, maybe. 
um, just just a little more. He's a little brighter, yeah. right? Y- yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, I just you know I want it to be a little more uniform. And seeing that I haven't personally gotten too many of the hero series, mm. I've only got one of the banished brute, but. Um, you know, I like the set overall. It gives you obviously the main character of the of the upcoming title. It gives you a new figure from the faction we'll be fighting against. So all in all, I think it's a good mix, uh, and it, it's a, it gives you a good range. You would imagine this brute is Ooh. like a different rank or something like that, right? That's why yeah. he's d- got the different armor. Yeah, or the, or probably the, like I, a minor or yeah. something. I mean, I think some of this um, infinite with all like the, all the different alien factions with the different armor themselves. It, it's it's kind of showing that. I think a lot of the enemies are just kind of cobbling together what they have mm-hmm. um, mm. versus like where the covenant yeah. was very, you know, strict and regimented with their, with how everything looked, which made sense in, in universe. Now it makes sense. I, I feel like, you know, the brutes are just kind of grabbing whatever they can, throwing it on their, on their yeah, helmet really. and shoulder and going out there. Is the MA 40 in this set, the same one that comes with the recon in the heroes yes. line? Uh, yes. Yes, there is cool. in the, the two pack. Cool. Sweet, that one's my question, Matt. Take it away. <laughs> a couple of things about this set, actually, um, is that it's not uh, an army builder set in a way that I think that the two packs, uh, the Halo mm. heroes are. You know, so I feel like this set kind of draws itself back by having one figure that you can amass a multitude of, yeah. and then you don't want a multitude of chiefs. So I wouldn't call and it an army chief. builder. Yeah, mm-hmm. I wouldn't really call it an army builder. Yeah. Um, I would say it would have been nice if we had included a couple more human weapons i would have liked to have seen maybe the the bulldog shotgun in here i can agree with that the grenades for this set are actually smaller in circumference than previous grenades so the stem is longer and the circumference is of the actual like grenade portion is smaller Mm -hmm. than previous versions really um interesting yeah so i thought that was kind of interesting too and i also really really do like the the waist piece that is rubber. I think that's awesome because you keep that design aesthetic and you also get a full range of motion. So a couple of little things. Have, that have we gotten spike? Have we gotten spike grenades before? Yeah, 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 yeah. like way yeah. back. Uh, were yes. they also this rubber material? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. Really, really like I am. Um, so I think the first spike grenade came in ODST ambush yep. way back in the day, which was the UNSC recruitment center. Yeah. With the jump pack. Cool. Yeah. Um I was I did have something to ask. What was it? What was I gonna say? Oh yeah. Um are the grenades the new ones that have got like the little Call of Duty square gap so you can put them on the tab pieces? No? No. No they do not. Okay, that's interesting. So that means there's two new grenade molds in this line then, because these are new and obviously the ones that the Marines actually have on their leg straps are new. That's cool. I didn't realize that. Well, I, I believe that the ones that the Marines have are just Call of Duty grenades. Okay, cool. Oh, that's going to look weird because they're pineapple grenades. Okay. I'm, I may have missed the um, the mention of the gravity hammer, but I'm excited to see how that plays out in the new mm. game. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we, We've definitely. gotten... I think we had a gravity hammer a little bit in 4 and 5, but it's been a while since we've been able to really use it so it'll be fun yeah. to see the brutes use it in action Ooh, i bet that'll be awesome oh, definitely. yeah i absolutely love that yeah. <laughs> an assassination with a gravity hammer would be like Wah! oh yeah oh wow yeah that would be cool um matt why don't we move on why don't you take it away with the recon getaway the set that i could have got my hands on today if i had mm. ordered oh, it oh that hurts all right so i do have the <laughs> I do have the Recon Getaway. It has 123 pieces, and it retails for $14.99. This is probably one of the best transmission designs of the Mongoose, so it's kind of able to give with the turns. It's not as complicated as what we see with the Warthog set um, for the Infinite, but it does have a nice little give. The only thing I'll say is that if you load it up too much with Marines, it becomes a little top-heavy, so if your Marine is saying sticking his gun out to his right, then it'll probably lean right just because it's it's on that pivot uh, ball. Okay. Um, the figures mm-hmm. that come with this set are the reason you get the set, though. The Mongoose is cool, but the figures are the reason. So you get two Marines, an Elite, and a Grunt Conscript. So the Grunt Conscript basically has the same design as the um, Clash on the Ring blind bag series, except it has a lighter flesh cool. tone. So it's uh, more of a tan instead of a gray. Um, comes with a needler and then we have okay. the elite um, 
The Elite is also similar to the Blind Bag series, except that it's, uh, I guess, Under Armour suit is black instead of gray. And you see that in the in the Infinite gameplay where Chief meals uh, one of the Elites, and it has that exact color scheme. So I love that it's we're really just pulling from Infinite and making these characters come alive. Uh, and yeah, so that definitely. one comes with a plasma rifle, which is kind of interesting to see. Um, so back to the OG Halo version. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> then we get to Marines. And the cool thing about these Marines is th- I feel like Infinite has ta- I mean, I feel like Mega has taken a huge step with these Marines. And I know a lo- the huge drawback is that they're taller. But once you get past that, the design and the customization that come with these guys is awesome i love that you can take their helmets off i love that they come with different face colors i love that we have a guy with a beard now so there's all sorts of little little cool things (laughs) and and you can swap the helmets in and out like the helmet on this marine can go awesome with the female sniper and you can just swap it out um uh, from the halo heroes uh line so you get a smg and a shotgun and there's just so much about this set that i want to just say army builder because you can buy boatloads of these and just have a huge infinite army, you know? So I'm, I'm super excited about this mm-hmm. set. I think I have no drawbacks about it. Everything I like about it is perfect. I'm, I guess maybe I would have liked to have had another pair of shoulder pads for the Marine. But other than that, I love it. I love it. It's good stuff. What do you guys think? What do you think about the Mongoose build? Uh, the Mongoose build, I like it. I like it quite a bit. Um, Like I said, the, the transmission is unique. It is that kind of... I want to say it's like the Halo 5 Mongoose design where it's a little little lighter, little less armored. Um, so it, it's, mm-hmm. it's a little uh, loose. Did it feel longer to you when you were building it? Uh, hold on. Let me grab an old one and compare it. I got it right here in front of me. Uh, yeah. It is a little... Nope. Actually, if I'm comparing it to the Emil one, it's not. Yeah. It's about the same. The wheels are actually okay. closer together. One cool thing about this Mongoose, though, is the, the back seat where you can sit... Um, the marine and the back seat so there's a lot of different ways and positions you can position them on there so you can have them standing mm-hmm. up or sitting down facing forward facing backward and there's a nice little leg stand on there so not 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 too shabby not too shabby i like it what do you guys what do you think about it gabe um i definitely i mean for me the best part of the set of course was the marines i'm absolutely in love with the black undersuit for the um for the elite, um, yeah, looks sick. the the build itself, I was really really impressed with actually because the whole like undercarriage of the mongoose is just like usually with the older mongooses or mongoose, you had to <laughs> to actually build, um, you had to build the undercarriage, but now it's just one big piece where you can put in each individual axle to connect the wheels. Yeah, yep. um, it's pretty sophisticated. I, I really like the direction. I, I like the direction they're taking the UNSC ground vehicles, at least that that have the new suspension system, because it it makes for a lot more play ability, and uh, you know even for like taking just action shots or something, you can have you can have it propped up on different things. But I think you know the set all in all, it's a really I agree, it's totally army build. You can it's got all the army build potential. I actually got two of them so when I bought I. them, Thanks. so uh, it, yeah, they're super cool. I love them. The yeah. um. It's. I'm sure the mongoose is is more game accurate, but I'm used. I feel like the old mong mong geese were a little. <laughs> you know, it's a small vehicle, but they also felt like a little thicker. Yeah. Little, yeah. Quite a little beefier. Yeah. Um, and this one is a little bit more light on its wheels, I guess. Um, this one but, feels like it would blow up easily. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. A little bit. But I'm sure that's game accurate. You know. Yeah. So it, and, and <laughs> yeah. the, the little piece that's like right behind the driver that sticks up. Um. That that turned me off a little bit but now that i've i've seen it and played with it a little bit more um I, I i'm you know i'm into the design it's just it's just different so i'm i'm getting used to it and yeah. um I, I do like the suspension underneath i think that's a, a really fun play feature mm-hmm. if nothing else yeah, yeah it is a, it is a little skimpy matt i've actually got a i've got a question for you did you ever get the did you ever get the oni mongoose with the blue enforcer and the rocket launcher i have that how um I don't. How does the build for that mongoose compare to the infinite mongoose? Cuz in my you know like when I think about it I feel like they're similar but no, it's my, different. It's more like the other yeah, the other ones. Okay. Yeah. It's a cool it's a really cool mongoose. I like that one a lot. Yeah. 
the suspension systems for these sets are brand new right, right. for across yeah. the board so okay cool yeah and the build was brand yeah, yeah. the build um, was completely different. i did just want to chime in quickly and say that mia over on the mega constructs forums shared that originally the alternate build for this set was going to be a unsc comms tower oh so oh, that wow. makes me yeah that makes me think a little bit about obviously the um, smaller set that we saw in the wave with the banished turret so mm-hmm. I hope that they release instructions for that in the future because it would be really cool to um, see what they were envisioning and how they would make that with the parts included in this I could see some cool stuff with those axle pieces yeah I would have preferred that actually because did anybody uh, did anybody do the alternate build I did not I just no. did the I don't have the set Matt so no no I know I know <laughs> man I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to I was just saying the other guys <laughs> <laughs> no, I was I was gonna say we should probably do uh, an alternate build show. I think that would be fun yeah. down the road. Yeah, for sure. Um, once think... we all have a second set, or you know, we had time to spend with with these ones, let's just cover all the alternate alternate builds. Yeah. At once, that'd be fun. I think that's a really good idea. I am actually planning on. I was thinking about it this evening, and I think when it comes to our video reviews as well, I'm going to do a separate video for some of the alternate builds. Yeah. Um, so I might take this hog apart and make the boat and see what Careful. that looks like at some point. <laughs> Don't break. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. So um, we'll keep moving forwards because I think we've got some nice momentum going with this at the moment. So Colin, you are yeah. up next. Yeah, I was able to snag that Banshee breakout. I want that Banshee. Um, it is, <laughs> let's see here. Let's get this get the specs here. So I have it as 1999 MSRP. Cool. I feel like Target charged me 24.99. They are, yeah. Wrong. It's been popping up at 24.99 at quite a few places. Walmart too. Yes, yeah. in the UK are charging that. That's a little weird, but on Mattel's site proper, they're they're only saying 20 bones. Uh, 218 bricks. We get a Spartan Recon, who's super rad. It's probably one of nice. my favorite figures that we've gotten. Nice. Um, cool. I'll talk about him in a second. And then we get the another Elite Ultra, which is very similar to the Halo Heroes set, um, or the Halo Heroes uh, figure. I'm not going to really talk about him much, because we'll talk about the Halo Heroes version more. It, it's yeah, the same exact mold, only just a little less detail. Okay. Um, cool. it's, it's, you know color wise from the armor it looks pretty much the same same just less paint applications and then you get a little uh, beam rifle a little red beam rifle which is pretty rad too hmm, but cool. no paint applications on that Interesting. but this recon this recon is great <laughs> nice um i don't think i have many recons can you guys tell me if they changed anything from this at all just from looking at the pictures yeah yeah okay well, this is the new mold recon, which has only been released in that set and Series 12. It's a new Halo Reach mold. So now, currently, to date, they have Halo 3, Halo 4, and now the Halo Reach recon. Okay, so is the chest armor always this rad? Because <laughs> this thing is amazing. That's the, I believe that's the scout armor from Halo Reach. Okay. So they've had, you know, they've had that for like June and things. Actually, I got a question for you about the color. How does that figure match up with the custom... Um, um, did you ever get the customizer set, the purple versus green? No, I never got that. The thing is so rare. Uh, I'm dying to see how the recon in that set matches up with that because it looks okay. like that metallic green yeah. instead of just like a flat green, but it does look like a really nice figure. Yeah, it's great. The paint applications are great. The, like on his shoulder, he's got – is it like – what is it? Are they little knives or what are they yeah, on his shoulder? it's a little knife. Um... No, it's multiple because it's got multiple prongs. Oh, on it. oh it's the bullets. the bullets. Yeah, because June yeah. has got bullets on his shoulder plate. Yeah. It's basically June with a recon yeah. helmet. <laughs> it literally is. <laughs> but it looks good. I mean, I, I it, you know, it makes me happy. Yeah, it's so, so And I like the boot, the boot color. You know, that's a little bit different than the rest of the green. So it makes it me feel like he's out there getting either he's getting dirty or that was done by design, which I'm I'm good either way. Uh, his forearms <laughs> match that as well. So yeah, he is he is very good. One of my favorite figures that they put out with this whole infinite line so far. The um the Banshee itself, it's so thick and beefy. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> this thing, yeah, it's a that's thing banished for it's you. It's a fat banshee, and I wasn't prepared for that. Like going along in the bills, like okay, this feels like a banshee. I can see where the wings are. The yeah, the wings are coming together. This makes sense. It was, it was a cool build, but once I had it in my hand, this thing is just fat. And it, I, I'm envisioning. <laughs> It is, and, and when I'm envisioning a Banshee in the gameplay, it's supposed to be sleek, right? And so it does have the sleek curves, 
but it, they don't normally have that much girth. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I just want to chime in. I was going to chime in and say, since it's the only time I'm ever going to get to do this, I do want to use my host powers to remind you that we don't fat shame on this show, Colin. <laughs> Jeepers. <laughs> Thick banshees are beautiful too. They are. <laughs> oh man. Well, how, how thick is it compared to other banshees? Like, is there? Well, I don't have the ones on hand, but um, putting it together, I mean, it's so I had built the other um, banshee, the banished banshee, fairly recently, and that one didn't feel nearly as as thick as this thing. And mm. the wings are a little bit. I guess they feel stubbier because there is more to them. Um, yeah. versus just, you know, like they're, they're wider overall. Interesting. And, um, yeah. So this thing's like a mini flying tank. And <laughs> I guess that falls in line with what the Banish probably would do with, with their vehicles. Yeah. They would make them thick. Yeah. So it's just, it's, I, I'm not used to it yet. Um, I want to get a second one and maybe put, put them in like a diorama type setting and, and see how that looks. Um, so that was just, that's just jarring. Um, the, the, it looks good. But like in your hand, it feels thick. Does the that big like silver piece mm-hmm. on the front of the um, yeah I guess like the cockpit is that a separate piece or is that molded on directly to the the cockpit itself? Like, can that come off? That is a separate piece. Yep, that's a separate piece. Oh, no one really? has taken a picture of it without that big silver guard on. And I'm wondering mm-hmm. if it's possible to take this banshee and if you were to paint it like purple, you'd have a perfect Halo Reach banshee. Oh, that would be so cool. Yeah, could that be. could be cool. Oh, um, the sweet. little there's like a little yellow highlight on the on the end that's that's its own piece too it's like yeah. a little rubber piece that just sticks oh, right. on the end there. nice cool yeah so, so that's its own thing and then i actually like the yellow um what are we calling those are plasma bombs is that what they're supposed to be um i, think so. I, I like we'll those <laughs> yeah I, well, I like those because in general those things are so easy to lose if you're actually yeah. using them and firing them so the fact yeah. that they're bright yellow makes a lot of sense from a toy you know playability standpoint the ones i have some that are like translucent blue from other sets like the hornet set has a bunch of translucent blue mm. now my gray carpet those things are just gone <laughs> they're gone, gone. They're gone. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so at least these yellow things i'll be able to find they give you four of them which is good oh, nice. um so yeah, I mean, I have mixed feelings because I'm just not used to this this new design of right. the banshee. But it does if you if you you set it down or you put it up on its little stand that you, they they give you they give you a little clear stand to put it up on. It it does look good. Um, hmm. It's just a, it's just a lot thicker than what I'm I'm used to. And the the recon is definitely the star of the show in this set. If you can get a, you know a bunch of these, um, the alternate build looks cool. But again, we'll we'll probably talk about that in a separate show. Yeah, cool. Um, I was going to ask you, so I feel like the original Halo Wars 2 Banish Banshee feels a lot like the original Mega Banshee, and Mm -hmm. the wings feel really similar, and the cockpit obviously is the same piece. Does this build feel a lot like the Halo 5 one? It feels a little more similar to the Halo 5 one, yeah. Okay. It looks it. Um, mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't have them in front of me right, both right in front of me right now. But yeah, it feels a little bit more more like that one. So maybe it's just because I built the the Halo Wars Two Banshee more yeah. recently. Um, it, this one just felt you know different. So yeah, I get that. Mm-hmm. I was gonna ask as well. Um, so one thing I've seen a few people comment on online, they said that this one has got a bit of a gap at the front between the cockpit and the actual body of the Banshee, and it can be a little mm-hmm. bit unsightly. Um, is that something that you've noticed with yours at all, or is it something that doesn't really stand out to you? No, it did, that didn't stand out for me as much. The thing that was a little weird was the the wings. Yeah. Um, and it makes sense now, but like, th- there's a clear piece that holds those wings together. Okay. Um, on each side, if you can see, there's a little gap there. If you're looking yeah. at one of the pictures, um, but that there's a clear uh, two by four plate that's holding those together. And it's clever, um, and because I'm sure you know in game it looks similar to that. We haven't seen that yet in the gameplay. But um, that took me a, a bit to get used to when I was when I was you know building it and putting it together to start with. Like, oh, okay, all right, I'm into this now. So, yeah, that's good. Cool. Okay. Well, did anyone else have any questions? <laughs> well, let's let's talk about you, Tom. What do you have? Yeah. What do you have to say, Tom? Cool. So the only set I've managed to get my hands on so far is an absolutely beautiful one. Um, Colin, thank you for letting me buy this for you. Absolutely. I appreciate that. 
Um, and this is Warthog Rally. So obviously the Warthog is the arguably the most iconic vehicle in Halo. Um, and this is my favourite rendition of it yet. Um, the kind of the thing I can't get out of my head when it comes to this set is the fact that where it's a lot beefier and a lot bulkier, it really reminds me of the live action adaptions we've seen of the Warthog. So kind mm-hmm. of like in Forward Unto Dawn where you see an actual human next to it and it's this bloody massive vehicle. Um, this feels a lot like that. So it's um, a little bit kind of thicker. It is a bit taller and it just feels really, really innovative. Um, When you compare it to the Warthog Resistance version, which is the closest uh, version with the 343 design, this one feels like it's taken the best bits from that and has really Mm -hmm. built on that and added a lot of curvature to the build and also a lot of detail to it. So additional detail on the sides, for example. Well, the Um, way they build the body is completely different. Yeah, 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 it is. You put the sides on at the end, which blew my mind. Yeah. Um, and, and there's not those big chunky pieces that are made just for the warthog on the hood. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it is literally built from the ground up, which is mm-hmm. really, really cool. Nice. Um, there's r- some really, really cool details in here. I could honestly talk about this for ages, as you know, because I did a review. It's 20 bloody minutes long. Um, <laughs> but it has got some fun stuff. There is some nice engine detailing. And I have to admit, the biggest highlight for me, and this is a really small detail, but I love it, is the new light system that they put in. So on the Warthog resistance piece, uh, vehicle even, it used a old rubber hose piece, which had been in the mega inventory for ages, to hook up the light to the main frame of the hog. And that meant that you would really struggle with putting a figure in because the hose piece would get in the way. So it got to the point where I just removed the lights on my old hogs because i thought that they were doing more harm than good yeah um but this one uses a call of duty bandolier piece from a weapon so it is so thin that it actually looks like a cable in scale with the warthog it is incredible how much um just that little thing really highlights how far mega have come and how much their parts inventory has really grown and expanded um so I think that's cool. Obviously, the main thing to talk about here is the suspension system. It is completely new. You get a couple of brand new pieces here that are used for it. Mm-hmm. And the way it works is essentially lots of clips connecting across two pieces. So the wheels connecting to one bit and then kind of um, almost arms with clips on both ends hooking up to the main body. Um, and then a rubber band is put in for some extra friction on one side. How did um, you feel when you were putting that together? Wasn't it weird? It, it was very fiddly. It was, I'll be it was a little frustrating, frustrating, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Um, okay. When I put mine together, you know, th- this might not make sense to anyone listening who doesn't have it. So if you don't, I encourage you to go and look at the instructions on the website. Um, but there's these little bronze pieces that you have to press into the frame mm-hmm. that then connect up the arms. And I found that my suspension wasn't working for ages and it was it kept falling apart when I tried to press down on it. And that was because one of the arms was like a millimetre out of place. Like that bronze thing was just sticking out the hole slightly. Oh, okay. And so it meant it threw the whole mechanism off. So it is quite a delicate mechanism in that regard. And I could maybe see it falling apart with some play, to be honest with you, because of hmm. those kind of connection pieces. Um I, I thought it it's... felt pretty sturdy, though. That's weird. Um, when I was putting it together, mm. um, you know, I, I, well, it was one of those things where it's like, oh, I see what they're doing. Oh, this yeah. is, yeah. oh, all right, okay. So, like, slowly all came, because you put those together, you know, partway through the build. <laughs> yeah. And, like, I got really excited when I was doing this, because they hadn't done anything like this before. Um, and when, when, at least for me, anyway, you know, when I put it together, it felt pretty sturdy and then the the biggest pain was sticking that big block to the body <laughs> yeah afterwards you have to like cause... press down the two outlying bits don't you yeah you got to really yeah. find the sweet spot and that's just that's just the case with brick based stuff when you have too many too many pegs um anyway so yeah i i, I enjoyed it um putting it together and I, I don't know we'll see we'll see what happens over time i think to your point you know as you're um, doing photography and, and other things with it to see if it does it's crumble over time. <laughs> no, I always yeah. I always worry about rubber pieces because um, yeah. I feel like those yeah, are going to degrade. They, if they get rotted. 
Yeah, yep, exactly. There is a track record with some of the earlier Mega Treads doing that, so hopefully we're past those days. Yeah. Um, Were the wheels new? The wheels are... are they possibly. The same? Mm-hmm. I, d- I didn't get the time to compare them, but they did look new. They looked mm-hmm. a little bit thicker. could take a look right uh, now, actually. Yeah, the, the yeah that would be really useful, Gabe. The tread design is new, and the hubcaps... Cool. The hubcaps might actually be as well. Um, I'm, compar- oh, wow. I'm comparing it to the anniversary hog that came with the Arbiter and the Chief, but they're entirely yeah. new wheels. They're actually a little thinner, and they're a little more rounded as well. They might... They might be reused from earlier versions. It's possible. Um, like the Warthog Resistance. I really, mm, I'm not really sat in a place where I can see both of them. Um, oh, do you know what? I can see my Warthog Resistance from here and they do look quite similar. Uh, so it might just be a 343 design thing and when yeah, compared to like think, a Bungie yeah. era. they might be reused. It looks like they are, but they've just got new hubcap colours. Right. I'm going to apologise because somebody will comment on this if my audio just went funny. I was looking halfway across my room, so I wasn't yeah, looking at I my could... mic, okay? <laughs> Good picture sure his head Come turned. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I think that's cool. I do think, like you say, kind of the way they do it, because you have clips on both sides of the mechanism, I do think that adds some kind of rigidity. Uh, rid- I can't say that yep, word. You can it do it. It makes it a little bit more rugged. Um, so I do Rigidity. think it would. I said it yeah, for you. There we go. I do think it would hold itself in place more now it's properly secured and I've not kind of mucked it up. Um, but yeah, overall the build is good. Um, and where this really shines is with the figures. We get a marine, which obviously we're seeing in a lot of the sets. Uh, but I really like this one because he's got exposed sleeves which is awesome. We, like, never get them, and it adds so much variety to the BDUs we have in the Marine Arsenal to kind of have figures that look slightly different. So I really, really like that. Um, We get a version of the Chief, who is in an olive colour, quite similar to earlier Chiefs in this same colour scheme. I think it's the same colour as the Package Chief, uh, which looks quite cool. Some nice paint apps on this. And then the two Jackal Freebooters, yeah. which I have to admit look a lot better in person. Absolutely, mm-hmm. I really, really like these. Hmm. Yeah, they're pretty. They're like they're weird looking, but the more I the more I spend time with it, the more I really like it. Yeah. Um, and they've got the peg hole on top, which means possibly Jackal snipers. Sniper. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I am really excited about the prospect that I mentioned that in my review that has me hyped. Um, The thing I would say I really like is because the figures feel a lot more slender, especially with the new body uh, piece on the jackals, you can kind of get them to do that thing where they stand up straight and hold their shield really tight into their body. Yeah. Um, Mm. I, I, I managed to get it in a photo earlier when I was doing some toy photography, and I just thought, wow, that, like... That figure with that pose looks like it was pulled out of the game. Um, so well, the shields think... have never been scaled quite right, though, have they? No, they haven't. Which is they're true. a little bit smaller but... than they are in game, especially now for a new articulation yeah. jackal. Yeah, I am glad that we mentioned the shields because these have got marbling on them, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, the the best comparison I can make is it's like the ice colored bricks in the Game of Thrones. Um, white walker wall battle set where they are kind of like ice colored almost and they've got some different colors marbled in which looks really cool um so all in all really good set i think this is perfect entry level set for everyone because you get chief you get some new villains you get the iconic vehicle and i think for 30 dollars you can't go wrong is it absolutely uh tom is it is it the best warthog yes I'm Whoa! It. Wow! It the Hot take only in it. one, the only one that's better is the dual attack warthog. No. <laughs> Stop. Oh okay. I will. I will push back a little bit. You said that the most iconic vehicle in Halo is the warthog. I have to disagree. The most iconic vehicle oh. in Halo is a crashed pelican. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's very good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I genuinely, I thought you were going to be smart there and you were going to go, it's the Mjolnir exosuit. Okay, oh, yeah, I'm not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, I have spoken for long enough, so why don't we get into some Halo heroes. 
Gabe, take it away with the three that you're going to take a look at. All right. To start off with my three heroes from the newest of the Halo Hero Series 12 is the Mark 7, which in the previous episode that uh, they included me on, and as I've posted on my socials plenty about, I am absolutely enamored with this armor and the yeah. figure. I, yeah. I literally can't get over it. I think it is such a good-looking Spartan. Um, this one in... Is it better in person than when you saw it originally? Uh, yeah, even better. I mean, the picture made me want it enough, but having it in hand, there's one very small gripe I have with it, and it's that the design of the helmet, um, is just a bit too wide for the torso, so when you turn the head, it actually interferes with the chest piece, and it, it, it kind of... I don't know. It's it's a little clunky, but, I mean, if you're careful, like, it, it's fine and you don't really notice. But mm-hmm. um, this figure in Series 12 comes, obviously, with the new Bulldog automatic shotgun from Halo Infinite. It's in red and gray. And it's actually asymmetrical, and its right arm is in red along with the helmet, and the rest of the body is painted in gray, which leads a lot of fans to believe that the customization choices in Infinite will be maybe that you can color individual armor pieces instead of just your classic, Mm -hmm. you know, base armor and then a secondary. Um, But the shoulders, back, chest, helmet, and cod piece actually are all entirely new molds, and then just the legs and forearms are reused. Which makes me extremely mm-hmm. happy. They they really went all out for this figure, which makes me so yeah. excited. Um, this is going to be like the base multiplayer I was armor, about right? To say that, That's yeah. what I'm thinking mm-hmm. as well, just like how Recruit was or something. Uh, moving on from that figure, um, the next one I have is the Marine Sniper. Oh. <laughs> and this is... I'm in the middle about this figure. Mm -hmm. Uh, For what it is, it is an incredibly well-done figure. It's one of very, very, very few figures. I'm not even sure the Halo line itself has done this often, but its entire her entire undersuit has printed on camo on every piece, on the legs, the torso, the arms. Um, It's got a very crisp, nice camo undersuit in like a a grayish blue color. she comes with a side pack, two of the Call of Duty, um, I'm not really sure what you'd call them, they're, they're little, like, band pieces you slip on the legs that have, like, the pegs for yeah. grenades and stuff. The like, but, leg mm-hmm. straps. Yeah, she comes with a, uh, a flashbang, the backpack. Interesting design choice, um, was going with Mark V shoulders for, for the shoulder pieces. They're painted in a olive green and a tan, which... You know, they look, they kind of fit, honestly, until you look at them and you're like, oh my gosh, those are like Master Chief shoulders. (laughs) But um, she comes, obviously, with the ODST sniper helmet and then the new uh, um, Marine torso piece. And an interesting detail about her is that if you look really, really closely at the chest piece, she has eight slash marks. Yeah. Which... uh, Huh. I'm very curious as to why they included that specific detail or what it, you know, if it has any story implications to Halo Infinite. But yeah. um, other than that, I mean, there's beautiful detail on the bullets on her left leg. Um, there, The alternate headpiece, you know, all of the facial applications look amazing. And of course, she comes with a sniper rifle, which is the uh, the M99, the, the Halo 4 model. And yeah. then the last uh, Halo Heroes figure that I'll be talking about is the Spartan Recon. Now, this is a orange and blue Halo Reach figure, or it's based on Halo Reach, so the helmet is an entirely new mold. Uh, it comes with the new Halo Infinite MA-40, which also has interchangeable uh, sights, so it does have the slide on it, so you can put on different scopes and attachments. Um it's, you know, it's a rather, not basic in a in a bad sense, but I mean, it's a basic Halo Reach figure. It's got, you know, blue and orange, commando chest piece. Um, notably on the blue, there's actually a silver dry brush, and it's only on the blue pieces, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But uh, the only thing I'd have to say about this figure that I'm not particularly fond of is that the helmet is very long. Mm-hmm. It's like a very long, thin helmet which yeah. looks very uh interesting but i mean you know i'm always happy about new molds and seeing a halo reach recon an official one so that 
you know, me being a customizer, I, I usually use the Halo 3 one, but now having having an official Halo Reach mold, it, it looks beautiful. Um, the Halo, the MA40, the assault rifle included with it, it actually has some really, really crisp paint details. Has a lot nice. of silver, gunmetal gray, black detailing on it. Uh, so that looks really crisp, and so does the chest piece. But all in all, I mean, for these three Halo Heroes figures, um, totally army building style figures, <laughs> especially with the Mark Seven. Uh, even with you know, even with the recon and the sniper, you could definitely army build all of these. Uh, top figure has to be Mark Seven, hands down by far. <laughs> but they, you know, they're all great, and I, I'm really happy that I could find them in the whole line, or just of your three. Uh, in the whole line for me i mean the mark yeah. 7 definitely takes top in the whole heroes line i'm i really really like that armor cool i did i wanted to jump in off the back of the marine quickly and just say for um a good look at those tally marks and the details on the chest plate um sal so obviously halo fan for life his written review of that has got some really, really good high quality photos yeah, that show that. He took some great pictures. Yeah, he got some really good ones, so make sure you check that out. Um, and also, because I know you mentioned it and said you don't think they've done it often, the fully camouflaged BDU, this mm -hmm. figure, if I'm right, is only the second time that Mega have ever done this. Hmm. And the really? only, yeah, the only other figure is General Shepard from the most recent Call of Duty Heroes line. Um, holy cow yeah because for That's every impressive. other figure they have only ever done the legs they've never done the torsos for some reason um and, and for a halo figure at yeah. that i mean it's something we've never seen on them before so i'm excited because hopefully we that's can super see cool more. yeah 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 i'm just gonna jump in here and actually throw in a couple comments about these three um the most interesting thing i thought about the the marine was that she came with an odst helmet mm-hmm I was intrigued yeah. by that. I wonder what that means for Infinite. Is it that the Marines are just scrounging around and picking up helmets and you know making uh, you know what I mean? Like they're they're scraping stuff together. They're looting. Yeah. Um. Another thing, yeah. the Bulldog shotgun that comes with the Mark Seven is one of the best designed Mega Construct weapons because it I actually really totally fits in the hands of the Spartan with ease. So they can grab the front, grab totally it, and it just fits it. nice it and snug, awesome. and they can shoulder it yeah. perfectly. The one thing that draws me back about the Mark Seven is that I don't like the red. I yeah, wish it would just yeah, be a solid yeah. color because that's that's <laughs> I'm not I'm not big on color, especially <laughs> like if you don't want to get a headshot, you're not going to put a red. Uh, you know what I mean? But I understand what they're going for with the customization. Yeah. I do hope, I do hope that we get a Mark Seven armor design in the chief colors because i want to see mark seven yeah. chief and i don't you know obviously it might not be canon or you might be able to fix your you know fix your character however you want it in infinite but i would love to see a mark seven master chief just because i love the armor design and i i totally agree with you gabe it is solid yeah, it's it's, it's excellent. beautiful i mean there is a green mark seven that comes in another set that i'm sure you all will discuss in a future episode mm -hmm. but um, oh, true that. I, you know, I'd like to see at least for the same color they used for the Infinite Chief. That would be that'd be a cool looking Spartan. Yeah. Um, I did just want to ask. Um, with the Bulldog, is the foregrip removable? No. 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 Cool. But it's badass. Actually, can you even can you put um, can you put sights on the Bulldog? Uh... I think I've seen a photo with a red dot on it. Give yeah. me, give me, give me two seconds, and I'll see if I can do that yeah go ahead and give that a shot because i wonder live on air guys we're doing some pulling together i was gonna say i'm sure the armor pack with the spartans has got a marketing shot with it yeah does it really oh wow that's awesome yes you can okay so i just put the assault rifle attachment onto the uh and it's actually it's quite 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 large so you can have it up front you can have it near the that's near super the end of the cool gun. that's yeah. awesome that's awesome yeah really <laughs> this gun just keeps getting better and better guys i love it there you go live discovery Ooh. um Good call, Tom. matt why don't you continue discovering cool things and talk us through your free all right so i'm going to start off with my favorite of the line and that is the elite ultra i'm a huge fan of this armor nice. design um like i said it was probably one of my top picks for a halo heroes figure so i'm glad that we've we got an ultra this one is 
is actually quite detailed. And when I originally first saw it, and when we first did our episode on it, we didn't have the high-res photos that Mega Construct releases. But now that I have the figure and I'm able to see the photos, there is a significant amount of intricate detail just like interwoven into the armor. Lots of little cuts and, and grooves in there. So it actually kind of looks like a forerunner building just on armor mm. it's it's yeah. it's excellent also the plasma repeater that comes with this figure is one of the most detailed plasma repeater covenant weapons that i've seen it has a very nice light blue uh alien writing on it or whatever the the plasma guns have on it that energy yeah. glow on it it's awesome uh so that's the my favorite personally uh and then next up we're going with the brute banished figure and this guy has a one of the most intricate chest plates also i love just like the 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 indication of the red that's on his armor uh his shoulder pads are a bit broader so it definitely adds a little more beef to the character um oh, yeah the helmet isn't my favorite because it, it leaves his jaw extended so it kind of yeah it kind of looks um it looks like it's a helmet that's too small for him i like the fin on top yeah. of it um it comes with a weapon the not brute shot so um <laughs> but i really like it again it has that same kind of uh, waist rubber piece so full range of motion um it's, it's excellent the goon near spartan uh it has an interesting metal arm so you're kind of going back to that noble team cat design with that so i thought that was kind of interesting um mm -hmm. it is pretty much the rest of the body is pretty much emile's uh so same torso same kind of broad shoulder on the left um the helmet is excellent because it has this really cool little white stripe going through it so it just kind of adds something that sets it apart and with that figure you get the brute mangler so that smaller gun that we were able to see in mm -hmm. the infinite gameplay so that's pretty interesting how much detail is in that thing i, I don't have it in front on of the me. weapon or on the figure on the weapon on the weapon not too much it's actually probably okay. the the least detailed of the three that i've talked about well don't forget that the the um the middle comes out just like a concussion rifle. Yep. Oh, it does, right? That's a removable piece. I thought piece. they were going to do that mm -hmm. with the, the bulldog, but it doesn't come out. Because uh, the Gungner, the Gungner's helmet as well is as a new mold from Halo Reach, because they've only ever made the Halo Four Gungner. <laughs> okay, yeah. So um, moving on from that, obviously, I think there is one big set that has been popping up that we've not covered. So Papa Colin, would mm -hmm. you like to? lead us out with this big boy yeah this is the big one huh this is the defense point showdown dun, dun, lots dun. of interesting lots of interesting tidbits on this set um real quick it is 782 bricks and it's msrp at 59.99 target has it listed for 79.99 so you need to make sure to price match that with amazon um grab it for 60 bones save, save yourself 20 bucks um yeah this thing is it looks really good um it took me a while so once the once i was building and i wasn't sure what was going on um you build the the legs first so you have to build all three legs you have to do that three times um and then you build the center section and then and then you build the turret on top and um well so yeah you build like the legs you, you build like the feet of the legs separately um you kind of put those on on you know towards the middle of the build anyway um so i wasn't sure like how built big it was going to be as i was i was i was slowly pull, putting it all together but by the time it was you know i had the base ready and then slapped that giant cannon on top <laughs> it uh yeah it felt like a really a really nice piece i didn't have a chance to compare it to the uh, aa gun the re the uh, reach one yet just to see, compare size wise um but it feels similar i think the aa gun is probably a little taller than this okay but you can lean this one back and forward like the gun itself is bigger than the than the reach one right yeah um and it's um it's really cool like this this build <laughs> the the pictures don't do it quite justice because the there's lots of detail along the gun uh itself the cannon itself like on the back there's like these yeah. little pieces that give it some 
um, just some texture and make it look, you know, extra mean. And I love having, it's got, you get two banished pieces on it. So those ones that you see on the, on the, the sides, you know, those are painted pieces. Um, yeah. I like having two of those. So I'm, you know, and I'm just going to, you can use those for other sets. And if you want to build <laughs> your own, your little structures, you can have like these little banished, um, banished logos that you can throw on them. The, the, the legs have the, so the, so when you pick it up, the legs kind of dip down. Okay. Um, and so they're not, they're not solid. And so I guess that would allow you to put it on different terrain maybe and then allow it to to balance differently and then those those little pieces on the end i don't know what those would even be but those little <laughs> those tall structures on the end of the feet the feet those do pop off and there's a play feature yeah. that they've built into that where you kind of you can you know hit the end of it with your finger and then they'll they'll fly off do you think that's so. in reference to how you might take them down in halo infinite like to go for the the support legs. Yeah, it could be. Well, it's interesting because when we saw the game, when we saw the gameplay, it said that you need to go, you need to to shut down the turrets. Yeah, because by using yeah. the weapon on uh, from underneath, right? So I don't know. Maybe it's just something that's yeah, destructible we'll when you do get up to the turret if you are next to it. Are those the same turrets? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they are. Yeah, yeah. well, because mm-hmm. in the um, game you can go inside it. Yeah, right. this is significantly smaller than. Oh yeah, it's definitely been scaled yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. But sure. even in the Reach one, you could go inside it, kind of. Yeah, we can go under the, it. Yeah. It gives me <laughs> really, really strong impressions of the Mantis AA turret from Halo Three. Yeah. On mm-hmm. uh, on that one mission, it, it reminds me yeah. a lot of that mm-hmm. style. And if you remember, yeah, that's one of the sets that I wanted. So, I mean, like, Mega was just listening to our episode and going, like, what does Matt want? <laughs> all credit yeah, to you're Matt. Welcome, yeah. you're Quick, welcome. put this together. We got two weeks. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> um, I was going to say, I did notice a little detail on this one, and I'm interested if you picked up on this as you were building it, Colin. Uh-huh. It looks like they almost simulate it being a scaled model because there are printed pieces where the doorways are in the trailer so the doorways that shot in the trailer it looks like those printed black pieces there that simulate yeah. um where that doorway would be mm-hmm. yep yeah there's two of those one on, e- uh, on either Ooh. side there and when you look at it so you can't really tell it's not like a try like an equally is that like a triangle the legs yeah. so there, there's one in the front that is farther stretched out than the two in the back yeah so imagine okay. like a tricycle type situation <laughs> cool um, how do you feel about getting another mongoose in this set? Do you wish that that had been something different, or does it work well here? Mm, from a playability standpoint, I think it works because, I mean, just what I mentioned before, you can you can roll that thing under the turret. Oh, nice! I yeah. don't know if you can get it under with a marine on it, but you can <laughs> you can you can kind of play with it around there. So I think that that makes sense. I mean, there's no other vehicle, small vehicle that the UNSC has that would really make sense unless you wanted to. I don't know, pair it with a Hornet maybe, but that, yeah. that's probably too big. So uh, I think having the the mongoose makes makes sense as a as a you know an an, an additional play piece. I like it. I'm yeah. glad I'm glad they included it. I mean, in a perfect mm-hmm. world, I would have asked for a banished ghost, but I like that they included the. Uh, <laughs> I like that they would include yeah. something where you actually have like it's kind of like nice when they include different vehicles or enemies so that you can if you get this set. And you just get this one. You have figures to verse each other with. So I like that they're going yes. with that. I like that it's not oh, it's all it's yeah, all banished. Exactly. Yeah, so. yeah. What what are your thoughts on uh, it's Hyperius in that set? Correct. Yeah. So Craig Hyperius is in the set. <laughs> ah. <Shit>. ah. <laughs> and he is. He must have killed Locke somewhere along the lines because he's got his helmet on the side. Yeah, that's I'm really sure that. an interesting detail. He dead. Um. Yeah. So like. Apparently, I have terrible lighting wherever I go um, whenever I'm putting these sets. Because I was like, I was like in my office at home. I'm not in my office at home right now, but I like, I was staring at this thing, and I was like, is this lock or not? So I, I feel like I need to bring this outside and just like, like in the middle of the day, and just try to look at this thing. But just go it, you know, stand in the middle of the street in the middle of the day, staring at your little mega construction. Right, exactly. Gosh. Is this you, Jameson? Are you in there? <laughs> But, um, you know, it's, it's definitely that style of helmet. And I so something I noticed from the Infinite trailer um, or the Infinite gameplay, the, the Escher, Escherum, 
the he has uh, the the helmets that he had or he has his shoulder pads. Those are hel- those are brute helmets. Did you guys know? Are that? they? No, I didn't. That's awesome. Yeah. Hmm. So huh. those things. Um, so it's just one of their things. Um, and who knows if it's lock or not, but he, he is a really cool figure. He's got his, his jump pack on in the back and I love his helmet. The helmet's got a little, um, like a orangey, you know, kind of a ginger look to his hair in the back. So it'll be interesting Mm. to see how, if that plays out in the game. Yeah. And his helmet is pretty mean too. It looks like almost jaws on the bottom of his helmet, (laughs) the way it's, it's colored differently. And this set comes with chief Um, and a Marine, right? And the yep. grunt, and it, that new yep. grunt, and and the red grunt, yeah, exactly. So the marine, I was going to talk about him. He he's got he looks very Call of Duty because he's got his little, um, his little radar or his little antenna on the back of his backpack. Which have we seen that in Halo at all? Yeah, in Halo yeah. Three, we've and, seen a know. few. Of them. Yeah, Yankee okay. Squad had it. I don't think I have many of them. Oh, okay, the, gotcha. Yeah, a couple of them actually. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, the sets that I have don't have, you know, don't have the backpack with that, but I like it. Um, his helmet's good. He's, you know, just the, the more I get of these Marines, mm-hmm. the more I'm just going to throw all my old, old Marines away. They're just going to go. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you know? Hold on. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, they, I'm... um, I feel like for my eventual chess set, I just need to get a bunch of these guys yeah. for the, yeah. for no, that thing. They, they, they are the they superior are design. They are superior. Yeah, they're awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm into it. I mean, they're all, you know, they're the gameplay accurate and all that sort of stuff so but it does make me curious the more more of these that we get the more it makes me curious about in infinite how we're going to interact with marines are we ever getting a chance to play as a marine i don't know i mean there's <laughs> that'd be kind of cool but um there's infinite so keep, possibilities guys infinite possibilities there are <laughs> they really are then we get um well i'll save chiefy boy for last we get our um our grunt our red grunt with his his like the helmet that's like stuck to his face <laughs> yeah. and that's not removable at all is, you know, a little bit different. That's a brand new infinite design, right? That for this guy, uh, the torso is, but the helmet is from a grunt Imperial, yeah. which they released back in like 2014. Okay. Right back to the good old days. <laughs> yeah. The torso, I do like the torso and that torso does come apart. It, it's different, isn't it? Cause it, it doesn't connect under the shoulder. Does oh, it, it doesn't. You're right. Yeah. No, it is a little bit different, but it does come apart. So you can pull it apart. I, well, cool. I guess I'm doing it right now. Yeah, Sweet. it does come apart. It seems easy enough. But and it also does in the back. You know, my frustration with the grunts, where you put their their uh, armor together, it doesn't really connect all the way in the back. This one does, so that's nice. Cool. And then there's two little. So pieces we have a that happy Colin. Yeah, that's right. So I'm, I'm all about this one. Um, the, the, there's little um, n- knobs on the end of his methane tank that come off too. So those are like nice. those little little eye pieces. But um, yeah, so th- I'm happy with that. Um, I'm happy with his color, and he's got—he actually has good detail on his mask as well. So cool. very happy with him. And then we got Chief. He, there's so many Chief. Like it's gonna be Chief. We're, yeah. we're just drowning in Chief now. You get a Chief, and yeah, you get a Chief, and you get a Chief. <laughs> yeah. So infinite, infinite. The Chief title actually reflects the fact that Halsey is gonna clone Chief. Yes. Exclusive. I love ah. <laughs> <laughs> So he's pretty similar to the, let's see, probably the Warthog Run one. Except for he's got a little, you know, he's got some dusty boots. Dusty boots. So that's good. Oh, cool. Um, other than that, I feel like it's pretty pretty similar in all the other paint applications. The color might be a little bit different, but again, I have terrible light where I'm at. So this might be <laughs> a little bit lighter. Um, I did have a color question for you, so you're yeah. going to hate me. Um. Is the Marine BDU the same color as all the other sets? Because I've seen some photos that make it look a little bit like it's a different shade of green. Yeah, it's a little bit darker. Okay, cool. It's a little, I don't know, richer Um, green. I have a theory. Um, So, yeah, it's a bit different. I have a theory about this turret. And when I first saw this turret, this is what came to me, was that it was a um, Promethean turret. And I was wondering if this is a Promethean turret that the banished have repurposed to serve them it could be it definitely it could be mm, yeah. yeah it kind of has that look that, that, right? it has mm-hmm. that boxier look compared to whereas most of the covenant weapons are there's always a lot of curves and softer edges this one kind of just is mm-hmm. like the box but you do have to think it is the banished though and the banished are all about just scrap metal true but even even yeah. in their even but look at their banshee. It's it's it is 
beefier, but it's still got those nice elegant curves. Even their scarab doesn't have like a boxy look to it. It's got a very sleek look. I don't know, Matt. Have you seen the Phantom in this game? Yeah, don't don't bring up the Phantom. Don't no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm looking at the. Uh, sorry, I'm looking closer at my terrible light, and I think the marine color is the same. It's just okay. you don't have the contrast of the, the pale white arms on the one of one. So I think it is actually the same. Okay. Cool. Right. Well, I think that we have gone very in depth here, which has been a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to skip through the sets that we've not covered very, very quickly. Um, I would ask your thoughts on them, but I think we're getting on a bit for time here, so it probably makes sense to just touch yeah. on them. Um, so sets that we'll touch on in a future episode are Skiff Intercept, Pelican Inbound, the Army Builders, so the UNSC Spartan Armor Pack, the UNSC Marine Gear Pack, and the $2 General Free Packs as well, the Collectible Minifigure Series, the Forerunner Ring Installation, the Energy Sword, the Master Chief Helmet, the Building Box, and of course that glorious San Diego Comic Con exclusive. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't wait to have it in hand. Yeah, I think we are all very excited. So is there anything we didn't cover that you guys would like to touch on? What set are we looking no. forward to most to picking up that we haven't oh, grabbed? Out of the new... The new Phantom. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'll go first, then. <laughs> I want the Warthog. I haven't been able to grab the Warthog yet, so I am super keen on picking that up because it does look like the best of every Warthog. So I'm super excited to get that one. Colin, what did you say? Um. Well, I have the Energy Sword. And I haven't put together yet. And that thing looks super rad, like a great shelf piece. And that's kind of what I'm yeah. all about in my life these days. So <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm into that. I think the Pelican itself, though, is going to be, uh, yeah. you know, it's the biggest build out of everything. And it, it has some cool features that I want to see how they come together, not only from a build standpoint, but also a display standpoint. Yeah. So definitely. I think I think that thing is probably going to be my favorite. This the skiff is interesting too because I didn't realize it has a little bit of a like a gear on the inside that that lets yeah. you turn the turn the turret. So I'm interested to to put that together as well. So pretty much all of them. <laughs> well, cool. Yeah. Cool. Pretty yeah, much right, actually. So. Cool. Um. So yeah, Gabe. What about you? <laughs> Pelican. I can't wait yeah. for Pelican. <laughs> Def Scabby Pelican. Yeah, I, I cannot wait to see the Pelican in hand. Also, finally, to have all of the chief figures. Um, <laughs> I'm really excited to see the pilot because um, they're they're releasing his pieces, or at least his chest piece and his helmet are coming in that marine gear pack. But I am really excited to see the official pilot figure. Um, the banished. I'm not even going to call it a banished hunter, just for sake of avoiding, you know, rumors. But like the hunter figure that comes with it also looks very, very interesting. I'm excited to see. Actually, I mean, I wonder if there's any ability to carry vehicles on the back of it, like you could do with the Halo 4 one. So, um, the the new Warthog doesn't have anything built into the um central column that it would be able to pick up like the old builds have so i'm not sure if we will see that this time around but you never know yeah um yeah i'm sure brickman 117 could figure something out. i was just yeah. about to say i bet <laughs> you he's got it all rigged up he's got it all planned Ooh, yeah um, I'm real gonna... quick real quick speaking yeah, of good. um piece count i'm sorry i know you're gonna go but speaking of piece <laughs> count every all of these sets include a ton of extra pieces yeah yeah and i think do. some of that has to do with their new approach to the two for one builds so yeah. um some of the the builds that they have planned for you probably take a, an extra couple pieces and so they're giving you extra pieces that they always do but you're not you're getting quite a bit more because of that additional yeah. build i bet i mean you get an additional rail piece in the warthog which was quite cool because i've that they're, they're like quite a nice piece to get an extra of um so I was going to say, I'm actually most looking forward to the Marine Gear Pack. Oh, yeah. So one of the smaller sets. Nice. Um, but I'm just really excited because obviously we know that we're getting a Marine in the blind bags. So the fact that I can take that Marine and with the spare parts from this set, make like three or four different characters as well as the two in the set is fantastic. And getting that kind of armor in white colors to emulate Halo Reach is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Being able to make a pilot easily because we never seem to get enough pilot figures is awesome. I just think that there's a lot to love in this set. So I'm really excited. For there's it. infinite possibility with the Marines. Oh, and <laughs> yeah. uh, shout out to the pilot 
pilot, the only pilot to have ever survived a Halo crash landing. Yeah, really. He was proud. <laughs> well, we don't know he survives all the way, Matt. Well, he survived that crash. And on that note... He survives one that's crash. That's all that matters. <laughs> that's all it needs. Yeah. He's, he yeah. is now one on the statistic. Yeah. One has survived. <laughs> Our pilot didn't make it. <laughs> so before we descend into any more chaos about crushing pelicans here... Uh, I think we are going to round out the show. So Gabe, first of all, why don't you let people know where they can find you? If you'd like to look into my work or keep up to date with any Halo updates or news on my upcoming projects, just go ahead and look at my Twitter or Instagram at G Customs Creations, all one word, and you'll be able to look at my portfolio of custom minifigures all made by using Halo Mega Constructs figures. Thanks. And Fantastic. they are awesome. Matt, where can people find you? You can find me at Pure Genius Lego on the tweets, and you can also find me on YouTube with that. I do want to go, before I go, I do want to shout out someone. Yeah. Um, I do want to shout out on, uh, it's at John on the Drift. This guy's yes, awesome. Thank you man. so very much, John. He's a great guy. Yeah. For yeah. all the amazing comments. Um, I love that you build while you listen to these episodes. It's so nice to hear that you are enjoying the show. So shout out to you, man. You are awesome. Yeah, John's a good down-to-earth guy. We were having a chat um, on Twitter the other day, and he's a really cool guy. So, John, if you're listening, thank you for your support. Um, Colin, where can people find you, boss well, man? Well, if you type in Colin Perkins into Google, I'm on page four. You see a lot of things you <laughs> I'm on page four, and I still haven't found me, <laughs> oh, so I'm not even sure where to find me. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, Just You can tweet at me at Perkline. In- That's cool. Cool, sweet. And for anyone who wants to find me, I don't know where you would, considering how much of a dumpster fire me hosting this episode has been. Uh, you can find me at Tom underscore Jurassic on Twitter and Instagram. Okay, so that will do it for the show. Thanks for joining Builds with Blocks. If you like the show, feel free to support Podcast Evolved on Patreon. And until next time, evolve. Evolve. Evolved. Evolved.